Hey everyone, this is Robin with another edition of Horror Pop After Midnight podcast. And my guest tonight is Carl Newman. He's a dancer. Um, he was the movement body double action scene scenes for Michael Keaton in the Tim Burton film Batman 89. How's it going? It's going really well, thank you, Robin, and, and good evening to everybody, or good um, afternoon, wherever you're situated. It's going really well, thank you. Yeah, here it's like morning time, and I know it's the afternoon over there in England. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it's just um, sort of about, what, 11 o'clock, believe it or not. So yes, it's, it's getting uh, getting towards midday, lunchtime here. Yeah, it's like 6 in the morning here. <laughs> I know these time differences are amazing, aren't they? Yeah, they are. All right, let's get um, get into it. Um, before you got into Hollywood and being part of Batman '89, let's talk about how you got into uh, dancing. Absolutely. Well, believe it or not, I was a drummer uh, originally. I played drums since the the age of eleven. I was inspired through people like Buddy Rich, the great American drummers, and some of the British ones as well, but mainly Buddy Rich, uh, Billy Cobham, Steve Gadd. And what happened was I was playing drums for a dancing school. They saw me doing some movements at a social event. They said, you must do more. I was also inspired by Gene Kelly, Fred Astaire, the Nicholas Brothers, all of those wonderful dances in, in Hollywood. Um, I started taking some lessons with this particular dancing school. I was doing modern and tap. And then I met a guy whose sister was doing some classes at this particular school. He told me about another institution that did classical and contemporary ballet which was the leicestershire county school of dance i went to see them and that was magnificent because i did a lot of uh, performances we did the first national festival of youth dance in in great britain um, we performed at some very nice um famous kind of theaters as well in leicester the haymarket where some of the west end plays and things started off from uh, and then from there my friends were going off to audition in London for the famous schools like Laban, London Contemporary, Ballet Rombe. I decided to go down the commercial dance route which was a, an institution called Lane Theatre Arts, one of the best kind of theatrical uh, colleges in the UK, that's in Epsom in Surrey. I did three years there in all forms of dance and then it was a case of getting your equity card. So I signed up with some very good agents and they started to send me for big auditions and castings and things. And then I got this uh, wonderful call opportunity to, opportunity to go to Pinewood Studios and meet the first assistant director, a, a guy called Derek Cracknell, who sadly is no longer with us, but a great guy. And then I waited from then for that other famous call where I could come in and try the costume on. That's pretty cool um, how you went to the famous Pinewood Studios. What's it like to, uh, to work at the Pinewood Studios? There was like so many big films that was filmed there. It was just unbelievable because like you've alluded to there, Robin, I mean, there's so many great films, iconic films like Star Wars, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, so much going on. And I've been fortunate to work on some other projects. I've worked on uh, another movie, uh, Till We Meet Again. Oh, no, sorry, Loser Takes All. And um, that was some ballroom dancing. And then I'd worked on some commercials right by the Bond stage. But it was weird, surreal, because we were working on a particular project. And some of my uh, dance uh, sort of partners... Um, friends, if you like, were saying, they're, they're filming Batman here. I've just seen Jerry Hall. And I was like, wow, that's that's incredible. And how surreal and coincidental that then I get that um, just magnificent call to say, Carl, we want to see you in the costume. And then lo and behold, I'm on the movie for 11 weeks. So it's just absolutely mind-blowing to have that coincidence. Um, just superb. How awesome did it feel to be in the iconic Batman uh, costume that Michael Keaton wore? Oh, it was just a dream come true because really I had 
grown up with the 66. All right, I was born in 62. I'm giving my age away there, but that's that's absolutely fine. But I grew up watching the Adam West series and absolutely loved it because of that escapism, that character, the cool gadgets and, and car and, and bat boats, etc. So that was imprinted in me from a sort of a youngish age. And then to ha- actually be a part of the Keaton movie was just out of this world. I mean, everything coming together, you've got uh, Michael, Jack, you've got Anton first, you've got Tim Burton, of course, Bob Ringwood, um, Prince, Danny Elfman, all these magic ingredients coming together and also being at Pinewood, which was the home of such fantastic movies. So for me to get that on opportunity, it, it was everything and more. Yeah, let's talk about some of the uh, scenes you got to do for Michael Keaton. <laughs> uh, the, let's talk about the uh, the opening scene they didn't use in the film where you were right by these gargoyles. Um, I saw uh, stills of that. That looked pretty phenomenal. Yes, that, that was, I mean, if you can imagine, I've got three um, sequences initially that that's one that you've said there with the gargoyles. I absolutely um, was thrilled to bits to get that opportunity because, you know, I pride myself on my sort of composure, my dedication to my art form, dance, and everything, and that involved very much kind of yoga, uh, dance type um, positioning where. As you know, and probably a lot of people would know this with the costume, it it was very restricting, very cumbersome, very hot. But as a dancer, you don't even think about that. You know, you're you're a masochist, you're there for your art. And I just loved assuming this position on the floor like a gargoyle, where it was like a spinal stretch, if you like, where I assumed that position and I fought against the costume wanting to pull me down. But it was a lovely sort of symmetry of the body. And then Tim just asked me to do these very minimal movements, maybe a sort of a turn from the waist or or maybe in the back wall or in the head. But apparently it just looked absolutely mind-blowing in rushes or dailies. Um, Annie from Wardrobe had told me all about that. I mean, it felt like I was doing that for literally hours because, you know, you are very, very patient. You realise that filming is such a slow perfectionate process to get it you know just amazing and it could be that i was literally there for for so long waiting for all the different elements to come together that the lighting the camera um any kind of atmosphere as well there with dry ice um so it was a long time it felt an awfully long time but i just felt so proud deep down that i'd held this kind of position but made it also look very kind of surreal interesting and then to be told that from what they'd seen uh just really filled my heart with pride but then to know that they actually cut that from the movie was was so sad but then to know as you know that i do that iconic scene where i land on the rooftop i just do that very softening of the knees like a plie and dance let the cape come down very slowly um, and then I do that next scene, which is where you see me jumping and just with the cape out, outstretched, jumping down to the muggers. And then literally Michael picks it up from there where he flaps the cape. But that's all me prior to that happening. And sadly, the, the animation got used over me. But yes, they, they were the first big scenes. And then I can tell you more. Yeah, let's talk about... Um where you got to hop into the Batmobile with Vicky Vell, who was played by Kim Basinger. How cool was that to get into the Batmobile with Kim Basinger? Oh, wow. I mean, I'd, I'd always loved Kim anyway as an actress, such a beautiful actress as well. Uh, again, from films I'd seen previous. But yes, to get that opportunity. And also, again, um, I feel so proud because people would realize how small that cockpit is how tight it is to to get into even just as a normal person but to have the full regalia costume on was unbelievable but knowing how i am being such a perfectionist and knowing that i've also looked at gymnastic moves and strength moves agility moves 
the way I perfected that was to feel that I was on um, a pommel horse in, in gymnastics. And so the, the, the legs are glued together and using momentum, using sort of flair, being able to um, be in control of my, my limbs and know that the way I can perfect that is to use, use a flick of, of the hand with the cape to drive that back so that all in one, as I'm going into the cockpit, that the cape will not snag or jar. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, Cy Hollands, who was Kim's double, actually did that with me. Um, I'm sure Kim could have done it, but, but you know, these actors, actresses, yeah. they, they want to save themselves. But I did do another scene with Kim, which is the scene where she's driven to the Batcave. Oh, awesome. And then I get... Yeah, I get out of the Batmobile with her and I take her on that sort of interesting uh, walk around the Batcave. So that a lot of that's me and, and then Michael. But yes, that, that getting in the Batmobile, I mean, how cool was that car? And I, I still think that car stands up as being the most favorited car, Batmobile. And how surreal was it to be in the Batcave, which you just mentioned? Were you feeling like a young boy in a candy store? <laughs> very much so I mean everything just seemed to get um, bigger and better and more magical because I, I'm someone probably like many out there I love so many different facets of filmmaking you know the makeup the special effects and the set design uh, costume everything is so paramount isn't it to make a film the success that it is and I just loved witnessing those, those kind of design sets that were there and, and yes the back cave was just amazing and i think really as well i was fortunate to be involved in the making of a hero documentary so again i had some time spent in the back cave and, and round about donning the costume showing people me me getting ready for for work <laughs> um yeah just magical all of those um set pieces you know design geniuses from Anton we're, we're just off the scale um also let's talk about you were being part of the famous bell tower scene uh how fun was that well the bell tower was was incredible because that was my longest involvement if you like I mean I I start off um emerging from the batwing crash so um like Michael it's 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 flicking between myself and Michael, obviously Michael with the close-ups, but I'm emerging from that back wing crash, pushing the cathedral doors open. And then it sort of alternates, as I say, between myself and Michael. But one of the other interesting things was actually coming out of the trap door, pushing that trap door open, again, making it look seamless, graceful, um, elegant, um, putting the trap door back and then coming out and sort of pursuing being so aware of my environment. And then, as you probably know, I do that swish with the cape when um, literally I'm, I'm sort of having uh, one of the goons who we know trying to capture me and I do that infamous sort of turn look back. So that, that was all um, so interesting to see. And then I did... I sort of shared uh, roles with um, Sean and Dave Lee uh, and Michael. So, you know, uh, that was all four of us, really, in, in that scene. But those those elegant sort of movement scenes were me. And a scene um, we've kind of jumped over was the um, Axis chemical uh, scene as well. I, um, I was hired as a movement double, but I did really verge and, and cross into stunt territory. Oh, so wow. The Axis, yeah, the Axis, Axis chemical scene was me running across the rooftop, stopping, and then doing that again, that, that cage swish, uh, very phantom of the opera, very theatrical. In fact, that was highly dangerous to do that, no safety measures. You don't really get the true essence of what I did there because... Uh, they edited that. I ran from quite a distance to the edge of the building, stopped and then looked and, and did the cape swish. But as I say, if I'd have slipped over the edge, there was no safety net, no measures there to help me. It was wet. It was windy. There was cables everywhere. 
but I mastered it and I'm, I'm just I live to tell the tale I'm, I'm so proud of that um, and I don't know whether um, listeners people realize I did a lot of insert shots as well so in the back wing um, I did a lot of those insert shots there's also a shot of me I don't know whether it's the shot that Michael had of him throwing the batarang but I also did a, a batarang throw which was geared up which may have been that one or it may have been another test but I did do all that as well and then we can talk about Prince whenever you want oh yeah let's talk about how you met Prince for the very first time and how did that happen well, I've been a, a, a fan of Prince for, for so long. We used a number of his uh, tracks at college to dance to. So, you know, that was also a fantastic thing. But I happened to be in um, a particular stage where the bat wing was on hydraulics for all the, all the work that that involved. And who should I see but Prince? And I was just like blown away because, you know, again, such a musical hero to me. And I did, I was very close to him and I did sort of say about how amazing everything was. I, I didn't want to come out sort of too cl cliche, like, oh, you know, I love your music, which of course I did. But I thought if I mentioned something about the set, um, these wonderful things that he would have seen on his visit to Pinewood, then that would have, have got the ball rolling. But he, he wanted to um, remain private, and, and I respected that, as I always did with, with everyone. But it was just such a thrill to be in his presence. And he did me the, the highest honour by including a picture of me at the bell tower <laughs> in his CD booklet. So I thought, well, I, I can cope with you not talking to me. You've, you've paid me the highest kind of compliment, uh, respect there by doing that. Also, uh, Jack Nicholson gave you a nickname, too, on the Batman set. He did. I mean, I don't know whether... I don't believe he's done that for anyone else, but it, he did have the most amazing nickname for me, calling the Ballet Bat and Bat Ballet, which he put on my photograph that he signed for me. And, and he also um, influenced Michael to, to use those um, nicknames as well. So <laughs> it was just... I mean, it's just a dream come true, isn't it? Having, again, an actor, I mean, I love Michael, but Jack, he was an actor that my late parents, the family, really loved, um, iconic. Um, so to be in his presence and to work with him, but to be given a nickname by him was, was just everything. So what was it like to uh, work right by, beside uh, Michael Keaton as well? How was Michael Keaton? Michael was great, absolutely wonderful. I mean, he he respected that, you know. I mean, he he's will always remain for me the best Batman. I'm just I'm not yeah. just saying that. But he's a terrific actor, but he he respected that, you know, more needed to be done. He needed some help in that suit, and an actor's not want going to want to do some of these dangerous or some of these scenes, are they? Unless they're Tom Cruise or whatever. Yeah. But he, he was very respectful of the fact that, yes, let let these guys do it. And he was great with me. We always got on so well. Uh, I saw him at a social event, a party. Great, you know, very, very gracious to me. I just wish in some ways I'd had more time, you know. But mm -hmm. when you're caught up in, in yeah. making something, you, you are on a sort of a strict agenda. You know, you can't just waltz off and, and yeah. start talking. You're in the zone, as we know, and you're, you're, you're concentrating on doing the best of the best for, for what's needed. Um, but he was always so gracious, so lovely, as well as Kim and Jack were. And Tim, Tim was just amazing what he said to me. Oh, what did Tim say to you? Well, Tim said to me at the rap party that um, he thanked me for our, my amazing contribution <laughs> to this to this film. Uh, um, it was always very, very um, inspired and helpful to how he wanted things to be achieved. He supported all that I was doing. But I think really in many ways it was kind of weird how I didn't do the sequel because he did say to me at the rap party, have you ever worked in America before? And, and just as we were starting to get into conversation, somebody interrupted the flow. Oh, maybe took that, took that away from me. <laughs> um, 
but maybe it was a combination of, as we know, politics, logistics, whatever it might be. But, you know, all of them were fantastic. I can't speak any more highly of them. Um, also, let's talk about the famous photo session with Herb Ritz. Oh, oh my word. I mean, that. can you believe these people have been, again, people that have made such an impact on my life because I love photography, I love art, I love so many things in the creative world. But I'd actually gone to Herb's, Herb Ritz's exhibition at one of the, the nice galleries in London and being absolutely blown away by it, loving his photography because I love Bruce Weber, uh, Robert Mapplethorpe, all these great Hollywood um, photographers. And so then when I got the opportunity to work with Herb and we just clicked immediately. I mean, his assistant, Mark Finley, was so lovely to me. Um, Herb actually likened me to a young young Mandy Patinkin from The Princess Bride. So, so that was really nice. Um, and, yeah, to work with him, just unbelievable. I mean, those shots, as you've probably seen, as he's done with, with Herb and Jack and everyone, he, he was just phenomenal, wasn't he, as a photographer? Yeah, you look... I just so sadly missed. Yeah, you look good in that Batman suit uh, when they were uh, taking... Uh the photographs. I mean, you looked you looked like you were ready to pop right out of the comic book. <laughs> <laughs> I did feel that way. I mean, I, you know, I prided myself on um, how I was. I mean, I, I trained for many, many years. And, and I think also with the dance, I'd, I'd done weights, I'd done circuit training, boxing, so many different disciplines, because I think it makes you so much more all round as a performer. So yeah, I, I prided myself on having a nice physique, but I think most importantly, knowing how to hold myself in, in that costume, because, you know, you can look wooden, you can look even round shouldered if you, if you're overly muscular, you know, but it's again, yeah. that shoulders back, getting that lift, getting that sort of very proud hero position and just, Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate that. I mean, I just love being in that costume and, and having that opportunity. That's pretty cool. Um, let's um, talk about our friend uh, Johnny uh, Carze, who is getting ready to bring out his uh, Batman fan made film, which you'll see on YouTube in December, called The Oath. And you got a chance. Yes. You got a chance to uh, uh, talk to with him too. And he wanted to. Uh, um, put you in the scene but since you're way over across the pond that would have been cool i think that's the thing uh, robin that you know it was as we know it was a low budget fan film you appreciate that uh, funds are restricted but i mean he paid me the honor of, of, of saying these lovely words of i'd love you to have had you you know in, in the movie but he gave me a beautiful acknowledgement but i always loved uh, liaising and talking with Johnny is such a is such a great guy, and I just wish everybody the best because I have seen that trailer. Um, I think Guillermo looks fantastic in the suit. Uh, I think everybody has done an amazing job. Uh, it's gritty, it's dark, it's thrilling, everything he wants it to be, and um, yes, he's, he's paid me that sort of lovely compliment there. But I'm so impressed with what he's done. I really am, and I wish everybody the greatest success with it. So, um, so um, did you uh, watch, um, once Batman 89 was filmed and all that, did you go to like to a theater or a private screening just to watch it and see, if you, and see yourself in the scenes? Yes. Well, <laughs> we were very fortunate that there was a cast and crew screening of it, um, and that was in Leicester Square, you know, a big, a big yeah. area in London. Um, I was so, so excited. I, I went with my then lady that I'd met on the movie who was a designer, and we were just my, we were just blown away by it because to see it, like you say, on the big screen, the finished article, um, it was then when we saw the deleted <laughs> scene, but, but we, we just absolutely loved it. And uh, I think, like with a lot of things, you need to see these movies again and again because you know what you've done but you kind of in such a whirlwind such a kind of a an exciting thrill that 
you know, you need to just grasp it a little bit more, absorb it more. So I did, as you can imagine, I did go and see it subsequently. And uh, it, it, it just gave me so much um, pride. And, and just to be a part of that cinematography and, and what will, will stand there forever, won't it, in, in cinematic history? You know, um, just amazing. I mean, the, you know, the, the end scene with the bat signal, that's me standing on a platform and I remember that was when it, one of the first scenes I did, uh, all full regalia, and Tim had me there, and we had this sort of very powerful uh, propeller sort of wind machine there, and the cape sort of fluttering back. But yeah, I mean, to to know that that's me, it, it's just I just can't quite doesn't quite sink in yet. It, it's still you know surreal, really. <laughs> yeah. Mind-blowing. Let's talk about the famous Great Walton Hall. You know, a Wayne Manor. What was that like? Well, I I sadly didn't get to go. I mean, that that is in Nebworth. That's Nebworth Hall, I believe. And one or two people have said um, a guy called Sean Reeves Reeves FX. He wants to go there. I know an artist I've worked with. They did a beautiful tribute tribute portrait of me. He wants to go. <laughs> I, I've seen a lot of these buildings which have been used for subsequent Batman movies. You know, the, the ones, um, the Nolan trilogy. Yes. A place called Woolerton Hall. So we, we're very fortunate in the UK as, as Europe with the history and, and these Gothic type uh, buildings. But yes, it's, it's high on my list. I mean, I, I'm hoping that I will go um, in the summer. And go and witness that because yes, sadly that was um, dedicated to Michael for Bruce. Um, I was um, at Pinewood for the majority of the time. I did go out on one location shoot, which I think was something else for Axis Chemical, but predominantly it was Pinewood, which which I loved anyway. That's awesome. Another, a couple more questions I'm going to ask you, um, which interests me too, because you know this is my show and I like to go everywhere on this podcast. Um, um, yes. You have the love for uh, nature and farming. Um, <laughs> how'd you um, get to interest in falling in love with nature and, and also farming? Yeah, well, my late father, he he was so interested. And I've, and I've looked in the genealogy um, that there's been farming, gamekeeping, these kind of country pursuits in alongside very artistic strands as well but i think that love of nature comes from as i say my 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 sort of dynasty my genealogy but very much from my late father who really wanted to always have a sort of a small holding or a farm i was very fortunate that i grew up on um on a small farm really which was literally a few doors from my parents home my late father built the family home and i'm so grateful that he built it where he did. But it was literally a few doors away from this farm that I spent a lot of my childhood. And I was kind of, if you like, play acting there. I I was dressing up as the the old farmer. And (laughs) I I was sort of this character as well, um, holding the lambs or whatever way I was and and just loving that whole thing, that whole vibe. But, yeah, a lot of that has, has kind of, passed through into my brothers. Um, I took my daughters to the farm when they were babies. And it's something that's remained and is, excuse me, so important to me that that love of nature, of farming. I mean, I was helping a lot of people during COVID with with, uh, food deliveries. So the farm that I was managing, the farm shop and and the, the other strands, if you like, we were supplying a lot of the older people and and disabled people or people that couldn't get out that were were, um, sort of isolating and we did a lot of food deliveries and I helped them and that that makes me feel very good inside helping others um, with something like that and being a part of really because my late parents and my late grandparents used to grow everything they they would have chickens you know, I think my late father at one time tried to have uh, pigs. You know, he was so dedicated to all those things. And he nearly bought a farm um, down south in Cornwall, actually. But then I think there was just too much to be done. But I've always loved that nature. I still do love it. 
whenever I can. I'm out in the country, I'm around animals. Um, on my travels, I always look to try and experience that side. And, you know, I, I'm just dying to get to America uh, and experience things there as I do wherever I go. But um, it's so important to me, you know, that, that nature. That love of nature. That's pretty cool. So where can um, everybody find you on social media and to see what you're going to be doing next? Yes. Well, one of the best things really, Robin, is to find me on Instagram. And I'm under the, the handle, the, the, the name of Ballybat1989. Or I have a fantastic site as well, which I've been very fortunate to meet the most wonderful graphic designers and artists along the way and they've helped me produce incredible t-shirts or, or add to the side autograph pictures but that's on ballybat uh, underscore collective 1989 so people can find me there and if they're interested i mean i just i just love being able to send someone a t-shirt you know which has got um i mean these are well thought out they're works of art I mean, they're not something I would ever throw together or, or want people to have if they were not perfect. But they are the most wonderful designs, I'm very proud of. And, and it's always lovely to sign um, a picture which is from one of the iconic scenes where, or whether it's from one of the Herb Brits sessions as well. So um, that's where they can find me. And, and to let people know, keep an eye on things because very exciting plans ahead. I've been having some photographs done in a test suit, but Ooh. I will be coming to California in January, February to um, do more. I've got a fantastic manager now as well. Um, I'm wanting to meet the fans and do some shows, whatever it might be. Even if there's a movie out there, I shall, I shall <laughs> grab it with both hands. Um, I mean, I have done acting as well, but I, I would just love to do more because it's something, as you can probably tell, it's so so close to my heart. I'm so passionate about this. Oh, by the way, you can send me a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to you'll have to have a look, Robin, see which one you prefer. <laughs> I definitely will. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much for um, coming out of your busy time to come on here and uh, share your story with us. It's an absolute pleasure. It really is. I, I love to be given the opportunity and to talk about something, as I say, so close to my heart. Um, and I want to be performing again. I mean, it's something that's in my DNA. So it's, it's wonderful, wonderful to have this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody, thank you for listening to Horror Pop.